Hello CTO Demonettes, welcome back to the channel. Those who are regular to the channel will notice something very strange today. I'm not recording in my office or in the cath lab or in the wet lab. Uh, I'm doing it from home and that's because the super typhoon Ragasa has hit Hong Kong and so we have one day being stuck at home. I took the opportunity to work on 3D wiring and also to record this video for you. So as you know, I've been trying to work on 3D wiring to try to produce a way of 3D wiring that's easier to use than the conventional way. To give you a bit of background on this, in 2016, Okamura Sensei published a 3D wiring method in a journal. But despite this and him having gone around the world publicizing his method, uh, now it's almost 10 years later, there's very little uptake of 3D wiring outside Japan. And actually two nights ago, I was having dinner with Okamura Sensei, and he says there's very little uptake of 3D wiring outside the Kansai region in Japan, just next door, three hour train journey away in Tokyo, they're not doing 3D wiring. But we, we know that the coronary artery and the CTO wire are 3D structures. And we know that what we're looking at from a fluoroscopy is 2D. And we know, and the data demonstrates that if we use 3D, it's safer, faster, and more successful. So I've been trying to work very hard to find a method to make 3D wiring easier. Now, some of you who follow the channel know I've come up with the ADAPT wiring, but that is still fairly difficult. You still have to do quite a bit of mathematics and you still have to go 90 degrees apart. So the reasons I think that 3D wiring hasn't been adopted are as follows. Number one, it's very difficult to make a mental 3D map. Number two, it's very difficult to understand the opposite behind same in front principle of Okamura. Number three, applying that in wiring 3D is actually very mentally taxing. Number four, we're not familiar with the specific angles that are required for each specific coronary artery segment. Number five, uh, we are not able to get 90 degrees apart for a spot with fuse for most of these coronary segments. And these limitations means that 3D wiring hasn't been adopted. So finally, after working on this project for about two years and the last few months, I've had an enormous breakthrough. I've developed a method of 3D wiring that does not require any of that. The name I've given to this method is Solutions, spelled with the EZ. So E-Z-O-L-U-T-I-O-N, Solutions. And what it stands for is zero degree overlap view universal three-dimensional wiring. Zero degree, the EZ gives you the Z. Overlap gives you the OL. Universal gives you the U. Three-dimension gives you the T. And the ION in dimension gives you an ION solution. Now this method compared to a wide wiring method is very simple. There's actually only four steps in this method. Step one is to locate the zero degree overlap view. Now, we do need a little bit of working out of what views to use, but it doesn't need to be specific to that extent of usual three-dimensional wiring. So if we look in LAO and RAO at the coronary segment, if the coronary segment goes up and down, vertical in LAO and RAO, so mid-right coronary, mid to distal LED, in LAO and RAO, they're going up and down. For these, you use LAO and RAO views. If in LAO and RAO, the vessel is going horizontal, proximal RCA, distal RCA, proximal LAD, left main very often is horizontal in the RAO, then go cranial and caudal. The best view that you can see them being horizontal, so for RCA, that will be LAO, so it will be LAO cranial and LAO caudal. And for left main and LAD, the best view to see them horizontal is in REO, so it's REO cranial, REO caudal. Okay? If you see in LAO and REO, the vessel is going diagonally, okay, in the circumflex OM, okay, then go LAO cranial and REO caudal. If it goes diagonally the other way, like the PLV, then opposite, so LAO caudal, REO cranial. So very simple. These simple rules, just one shot in the LAO RAO, you can roughly work out the views. And it doesn't need to be specific views. Okay, so how do we find the overlap view? So first, we need a little bit of nomenclature 
to know what we're talking about. There's two pieces of nomenclature we need. Number one is the target. The target is the distal true lumen. The most proximal part of the distal true lumen where you want to enter, that's your target. If you're winding through a CTO body, then we draw an imaginary line from the distal, most center part of the distal cap up the center of the vessel. And that central imaginary line is the target. So if you're wiring through the CTO body, you're aiming at that imaginary center line in the CTO body. If you're wiring towards distal cap, it's the most proximal part of the distal cap, that's your target. What is the wire position? The wire position is defined as the one millimeter of the shaft of the wire before the last tip bend. Take out a guy next wire next time, look at it, and it's got a pre-shaped one millimeter, 45 degree bend. And most CTO wires are shaped like that tip. Well, the position of the wire is defined at the one millimeter of the shaft before this tip bend. That's the position. And what we want in the zero degree overlap view is to overlap the wire position with the target. How do we find this view? Well, it's very easy. Usually we are already taking two views uh, to look at the wire and the target. If in the two views that you're looking at, the wire position and the target are on opposite sides in each view, then your zero overlap view is in between the two views. So for example, if in RAO, the wire is on the right side of the target, on LAO, the wire is on the left side of the target, then the overlap view is somewhere between your two angles, less RAO or less LAO. If in your two views, the wire position is on the same side as the target, then the overlap view is more rotation towards the direction of the view that is nearer. For example, you're in LAO 10 and RAO 60. And in RAO 60, the wire is very far on the right-hand side of the target. In LAO 10, the wire is nearer, but still on the right-hand side of the target. Then you need to go more LAO towards the nearer side angle to get the overlap view. Rotational angiography is very useful. Sometimes you can't find it, do a rotational angiogram and you'll be able to see the view that's overlapped. Once you get to this view, now, if you're finding the view, you might as well find the view where the wire position and the target overlaps most centrally. But if you overlap not centrally, it doesn't matter that much as long as it overlaps part of the target because it's going to poke, poke into the true lumen as long as it overlaps part of the target. That's step one find the overlap view. Step two is to do small rotations of the wire until you straighten the wire tip. Okay, this has been used in adapt wiring before. It's very tiny rotation. Now, if you rotate and you find the wire is actually being less and less straight, the tip is turning away, then rotate in the opposite direction. You don't need a mental map to work it out. Rotate until the wire tip is absolutely straight with the wire, it looks a dead line. Okay, that's the second step. Step three is go to the other view. Now, you don't need 90 degrees for this method. Uh, if it's convenient to go 90 degrees, sure, you can do it. But if you go 40 or 50 degrees or 30 degrees even, you'll be able to see it. Because when the wire tip is straightened in the zero overlap view, there are only four possible positions of the wire and the wire tip in relation to the target. If you look at this slide here, you can see the wire position can either be in front or behind the target. And the wire tip can be either pointing in front or away from the target. There are four positions. Now, as if even if you go 35 degrees, you're going to be able to see whether the wire tip is pointing towards the target or away from the target. And because you straighten the tip, the wire tip is pointing precisely at the right angle towards the target. Now, if it's pointing away, no point pushing the wire. What you should do is then rotate the wire 180 degrees, okay? And then go back to the first view to check and re-straighten the tip. Then you'll be in exactly the same position as you were if it was pointing towards. When you go back to the other view, the far view, you should push the wire forward and wire in that view because never wire in an overlap view because you cannot see where the wire is moving, okay? And because you already rotated the wire tip towards the target, that wire should hit the target exactly. Now, of course, the wire can miss the distal cap in near miss and 
Farmers, we've talked about this in the adapt wiring, see link in description below. So if you're not sure how to deal with that, go to that video. But very often it will hit the target. If you're wiring the imaginary central line of the vessel wiring through a CTO body with 3D wiring, you push the wire until the wire position overlaps with the target, the target line. Because then you're going to be back in the zero degree overlap view. Uh, so now your far view is the zero to get over that view. At this point, you straighten the wire tip again and you go to the other view, check you're pointing in the right direction and wire on. Now, if you push a long time in the far view and the wire doesn't seem to be, it seems to be not going closer to the target, then you need to recheck your views because you don't want to push a wire very far without checking views. So maybe if you push the wire five, six millimeters, that would be a time to recheck if you're wiring a CTO body. Now, so this is very simple, four steps. Find the overlap view, straighten the wire tip, go to the other view to check and correct if it's pointing in the wrong direction and then wire forward. Four simple steps. Where is this useful? Well, it's useful for hitting distal cap. Uh, when you get near 10 millimeters from the distal cap, that's a very good time to start using the solution method, especially if you have features of tough distal cap, uh, which is the Washington Monument, the calcific cap, the cap, distal cap with a side branch, and the rounded distal cap. And especially if there's no re-entry option and no retrograde option, then you want to make sure you hit it the first time, that's a very good time to use it. It's also good for clear interval path CTOs. Now, in the new Frontiers paper we published recently and in another video, see link in the description below, we divided CTO body types into four types. The taper type, which we have previously described already, the uh, long plus type, which we also have described in our AP Steel algorithm, and the uh, long blunt type, which is, you know, uh, sort of everything else, and of course the clear interval path. The clear interval path includes ISR CTOs, CTOs with calcium skeleton or bridging collateral skeletons, uh, CTO which, which are very short and you know the path, uh, CTO which you have a uh, island in between contrast island or CTO you have a previous uh, CTCA and you know where it is or previous angiogram and you know where the vessel course is so these are all clear interval path CTOs very suitable for 3D wiring. 3D wiring is also useful for puncturing the proximal cap. Imagine you're trying to puncture a tough thick proximal cap so if you're just you know using an XTA or using a uh, Gladius EX and it goes into the proximal cap, no need to do 3D wiring. But if it doesn't go and you're stepping up to a conquest wire or a guy and nicks two or three to puncture the cap, you might as well use solution because that will give you a more central puncture into the proximal cap, increasing your chance of anti-grade wiring success. It's also extremely useful for retrograde wiring in short retrograde CTOs, if you plan on single retrograde wire crossing, or if you're doing reverse cut, this is a very good solution to end balloon wiring because you can use your 3D wiring techniques to puncture straight so your reverse card can be successful the first time you wire it. So very useful for that. So I warmly recommend the solution method to you and I hope that uh, you will try it in your cases. It's very easy to try. I guess when you're starting off, you're going to try it in your most commonly in the distal cap puncture into the distal cap. You can try it in all cases. You don't lose anything really by trying it even with the Gladys EX wire. Adequate penetration force and backup force for the wire is important for this technique to work. So uh, I have a very low threshold going up to a Conquest 12 gram wire uh, when I'm doing this. So uh, I would recommend the same for you too. But I wish you every success in your CTO and I hope you find this technique, it works. And if it does, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.